Hi guys, I'm Dave. Welcome to Tactile Hive. Today we're going to talk about a, uh, a very controversial topic depending on who you're talking to. And that's shooting with your magazines on the ground. You'll hear people, very few are in the middle. It's either never do it or it's okay, I do it all the time. So let's, let's just talk about it and let's just identify what's going on and why people have such strong feelings for it. Disclaimer up front, I'm 100% I shoot my mag on the ground all the time. If the more I can get on the ground, the better. The lower I am and the most stable platform on the earth is the earth. So the more contact I can have with it, the better I'm gonna shoot at distance. I can buy a magazine on the ground with a good stable sling to manage my recoil and I can shoot accurately at long distance much faster than a guy with his mag off the ground, in my experience. But let's talk about some of the misconceptions and some of the reasons why guys feel so strongly on never ever doing it. And literally it comes down to malfunctions on weapons. You know, it comes down, if you put your magazine on the ground, you're gonna have a malfunction. You're gonna induce a malfunction. To a degree, there's some truth to that, but let's talk about where that's coming from and identify how you can mitigate it. And a lot of it comes down to the feeding source, like the magazines. Here's four of five typical style of magazines, right? We've all seen the aluminum, the army style, cheap aluminum magazines. We've all shot the full polymer style magazines. This is the metal and the polymer blended magazine. Um, oh, and another polymer metal magazine. The one not represented here are the, uh, the full metal, but they're steel, they're stainless steel, like the um, HK mags and stuff like that. Typically when I see malfunctions happening, one thing that we fail to recognize is the source of feeding, a lot of times is the problem, and it's the lips on your magazine. And they think, well, just because it has polymer mags or polymer lips, that should be good to go, and that's not always the case. It doesn't matter if you have steel lips, if you have polymer lips on your magazines, if you have aluminum lips, they can bend, they can weaken. Over time, they just get to where they don't keep that round inside the magazine as best as it possibly can. You add that to, a mil spec AR and you put that in the gun and now one that has a lot of wobble back and forth as I wobble that magazine what I'm really doing is I'm changing the angle feed on how that bullet is getting stripped off of that magazine by the bolt as it comes forward so obviously too much wobble in there is creating an issue so weak lips causing the malfunction to throw extra rounds up and get double feeds Right, but that's a malfunction you could have on the ground or outside, not on the ground. That's just a, that's a magazine issue, period. The wobble in the magazine, that's a big one. And if you look at the old army magazines, they've had problems with followers for years. In fact, there was an entire, you know, 15 years ago when they first identified there were problems with the magazine followers, uh, they started changing them. And they changed the colors first. And the ones we were initially issued back in the day were black. And then from black, they went to green. And then from green, they went to tan. And now with the new M855A1 ammo, which is a, that exposed penetrator significantly gouges out the feed ramps of the M4. It has a new follower, and I don't know the name of the color of it, but the way they taught us to remember which magazines to keep and which to get rid of was, remember it was, you know, black is whack, get rid of those. Green start to lean, tan was the plan. And then A1 ammo came out and that all went away because they've increased the angle of departure off the magazine so that we're reducing the amount of gouging that goes into the feed ramps. If I'm increasing the angle of departure, then I'm reducing the amount of ammunition face head in the back where that bolt's gonna strip it and ride it off and, and drive it home. So with a new follower, it is possible if I was, if I had my magazine in and I was pushed all the way forward, I was actually literally kind of pulling back on the magazine, it would cause my magazine I'm grossly over-exaggerating here, but it would cause my magazine to do this, again, lowering the back end of the bullet, so when my bolt goes forward, it misses it, and I, and I get a failure to load, right? But that's one that's grossly over-exaggerated, and two, if your magazine's on the ground and you're riding backwards, then you're not managing your recoil. I'm not saying it can't happen, I'm saying that if you're using proper shooting positions and techniques, and you're pushed forward in that magazine, you're trying to mitigate any type of recoil man any type of recoil and have the best recoil management you can that's not going to be an issue for you so let's just put it on the ground and let's talk about some of the different ways and let's let's look and see what it does let's see if we can induce a malfunction all right guys so here we are we're on the ground we're in the prone and we're going to try to induce a malfunction by pulling backwards which should induce the malfunction again keep in mind if i'm rocking backwards it's moving this magazine this direction right so it's reducing the amount of case head on the back of the round 
which if I'm gonna have it, that's where it would, that's where it would happen. So here I am, I'm digging it back, which again, this is doing nothing for me to manage my recoil. I'm back. Nothing there, right? So the way I would shoot it is this magazine would be in the ground, push forward, and I'm actually diving in, dragging in, trying to get my sling nice and tight. Unable to uh, to replicate it. All right, guys. So again, that's another reason why I'm a proponent of shooting on mag on the ground. It is way more stable. I can shoot much more accurately at farther distances. Manage my recoil better. Have a lower signature. Everything all across the ground. It, for me, it's just it's all around better. I've never had an issue creating a malfunction. When I have had issues creating malfunctions, for me, it's always been traced back to the magazine. So one, I'm a huge fan of numbering your magazines because if you start to see the same magazine number three over and over and over having problems with double feeds or whatever it is, you can identify that. We've all had one mag, you just may not know it's that mag, right? You think it may be at your gun. So numbering your magazines is one. Understanding like if you're gonna do magazine changes and you're doing your work at home and you're doing your dry fires, don't let your magazines, don't do it on a hardened floor. Don't do it on tile, don't do it on cement, do it on a carpet or, or have some type of rubber mat for your mags to fall on so they're not falling on the lips and he's constantly taking a beating and, and weakening and you don't even realize they're being, they're, they're being structurally compromised. So that's my thoughts and that's my take on shooting with the magazine on the ground. I'm all for it. What say you? If you have different opinions, I mean, by all means, share them, tell us why. If you like this video and you wanna see more like it, like it, subscribe it, share it, and uh, man, just get out there and shoot happy.